Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is September 19th and I'm picking up where I left off. When we finished in the last episode, I had just put in the Save As Menu item. Uh, it's not hooked up yet, it's just there to do something. Now we actually need to make it do something. Um, and I think in order for me to make this work, uh, I need to look at how the Save dialog in Java works. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. What we're, we haven't done any actual persistence yet, and that's the real goal here. Um, when I started the application, way back in the beginning, I talked a little bit about top-down versus bottom-up versus middle-out approaches. And I started out in the domain layer doing a middle-out approach, and from there built the UI and, and got us to the application that we have today. Now, with the menu, I'm taking a top-down approach. I'm building the menu first and then slowly getting to the point where it integrates with the domain layer and the uh, hopefully the eventually the persistence layer. And I'm not sure why I'm doing that. I think what I'm doing is I'm just trying to build out on what I've got. Um, I've, I'm thinking perhaps the reason I'm doing this is because if I just dive straight into persistence, which I could do, then I'd end up with sort of a gap between the new code I was writing and the existing code I have. And I want to make sure it integrates together cleanly. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, the reason I bring this up is because one way for me to implement this save as menu item would be to hard code a file name. That would be sort of a cheat, cheap way of doing it um, that would allow me to make forward progress. The alternative is to actually implement a file save as dialog, which, you know, is kind of a pain in the butt. So, um, but I think I want to keep doing the top-down approach and, you know, get this walking skeleton where all the bits and pieces are plugged together. One of the bits and pieces I have to plug together is, you know, the, the integrating with the Java framework. Uh, so, if I didn't do that, I really wouldn't have an application that was usable. So, yeah, you could make a case for doing it either way. Um, if I had a pair per partner here, we'd talk about the pros and cons, I think. But as it is, uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and look at that file save as dialog. In order to do that, I'm going to have to do a spike. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll be back in a bit. See you soon. Du kannst dir sicher sein, ich ändere mich nicht. Du kannst dir sicher sein, ich übe kein Verzicht. Du kannst dir sicher sein, ich lasse dich nicht im Stich. Du kannst dir sicher sein, ich schlag dir ins Gesicht. Krawall! 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 Krawall im Hause FTD, Krawall! 
spike turned out to be pretty simple. I spent a fair amount of time just researching the different dialogue options, but did end up with something that looks pretty good. Uh, I decided to use the native look and feel, or the native approach, using AWT rather than using Swing, because the one that's built into Java, for the Mac at least, is terrible, whereas the native approach is good, if not great. Um, it would be better if it pulled down from the frame like a real native application does, but I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, and the nice thing about the native one, I don't know if this is true of anything else, but the native one seems to remember the location of the last directory that you were in. So that's really nice. So, um, and it's just two lines of code. It's really straightforward. Um, you just create the dialogue and then display it. So, that's how I make this work. Now, the question of, of how do I test this, uh, as usual, that's a big question, and I have no idea. Um, and I'm guessing that there's not anything out on Google either, but I'm going to go take a quick look, see if there's any way of testing this. I don't have high hopes, though. And because it's modal, uh, it's going to be really difficult. Uh, I'm going to look into this. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So I did some research into this, and I found something really interesting, um, something I wasn't aware of. There's a book out there called Swing Extreme Testing, which is about doing test-driven development of Swing. Uh, this is the first time I ran across it. So it looks like it might be worth checking out if you're interested in TDD of Swing. Uh, I definitely want to be clear that what I'm doing in this series is not... Uh, I'm, I'm discovering as I go how to do the testing, which I think is interesting because often when you're doing test-driven development, you have to figure out how to do test-driven development of whatever it is that you're doing. So I think it's useful for you to see how I approach it from a position of ignorance. Um, but if you really want to know what people who have had a lot of experience testing Swing would do, this looks like it might be a good book. I can't recommend it because I haven't, recommend, I haven't read it, but um, the chances are pretty good that the authors have more experience testing Swing than I do because what I'm doing here in this series is really just bringing you along on my journey of figuring out how to make this work. So um, that said, I, I did look at their example of how they would test to save dialogue. I looked at some other stuff. And I think my conclusion in this case is that the cost-benefit ratio is too high. That is to say that the cost of testing this save dialog is way, way higher than the actual benefit I'd get out of it. In order to test a modal dialog, what you have to do is you have to spin off another thread to bring up the modal dialog. And then, as far as I can tell, you have to use the robot class that's built into Java to actually physically move the mouse and click the button and uh, to bring back your result. And that's, that's okay for some things, but honestly, the, the save dialog, I don't need to test that the save dialog has been, been implemented correctly. That either works or it doesn't. The only thing that I need to test is whether or not I'm actually showing it on the screen. And I, I don't know that that has a lot of value. Um, and also, you know, I'd have to discover where the dialogue is. I'd have to wait for it to show up at the right, the right point. It creates a really complex ecosystem. And if I had a lot of dialogues, I'd spend the time to do that work. 
Uh, it looks to me like the authors of this book have actually done that. They've got a couple of classes I've never heard of called Cyborg and UI that look like they do discovery of what's going on on the screen, provide a higher level abstraction over the robot class, um, which, is, which is pretty cool. But I don't have that, and uh, I don't think I need it for this. So when, when you're doing test-driven development, you're constantly making a you're constantly making trade-offs about thorough testing versus complexity of test. And I think the the cost of having a thorough test here would be higher than the benefit to the application. The cost would be lots of time coding it and lots of complexity in the application in terms of multi-threading and screen detection logic and you know dialogue detection logic and so forth. I just I don't know if it's worth it. Now but on the other hand, I could be just giving up too soon. So let's see. Let's um, let's just play around with this a little bit. We've got a few minutes before the end of the episode. Let's let's play around with it a little bit and see how hard it really is. So I mean, we did the tests of the new and creating and closing the frames, and that was a pain in the butt, but it worked out in the end. Maybe we can do something similar for the save dialog. So we're going to say save as menu item should show the save dialog. I don't think we need that throws the robot. In fact, I don't think we need it here either. So I'm going to give this a little bit of time, but not too much, because again, all we need to do is test that that window is shown up. We don't need to test the behavior of the save dialog itself. You don't... I rare, very rarely test third-party components. I either expect that they work or I find something else. Uh, rarely, if I really have to use a third-party component, like an interface with a piece of hardware or something like that, um, but I don't trust it, then I'll test it thoroughly. But generally, as a general rule, don't test stuff that other people wrote. Only test your own stuff and test that you're calling it. So that's all I want to do here. I just want to make sure that we're showing the save dialog, but I don't uh, but I don't want to test the dialog itself. And then later on, we'll emulate the return values of that dialog, but again, we won't um, won't actually test that we're making the right return values come out of the dialog because the dialog is responsible for that. So, all we need to do here is show the dialog. Um, let's do some inline Sort of pseudo spiking. Uh, this is the code to show the dialog. We should be able to run that on the event thread. How do we do that again? Let's see, it's a uh, invoke, yes, invoke and invoke later. We'll run that on, a, on the event dispatching thread. Asynchronously, so we should still be able to do our own thing. I think it just is complaining because I don't have the right import. No, I do have java.awt. Okay, I just didn't like the value I was passing in. Um, I'm going to do
going to do something kind of simple and dumb. Just to check my understanding of this. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to open the dialog and then I'm going to sleep for five seconds. And every second I'll print out the number of seconds I've slept. Let's see what happens there. I didn't see the dialog show up. Um, Let's make it fail. Fail like a pirate. Ghost pirate, of course. Um, there it's sleeping. Must be. Yeah. So let's run just the one that we care about. Not seeing that dialogue show up. Maybe because the frame is hidden. What if we make the frame visible as well? It's interesting, it, it doesn't seem like invoke later is actually running. Um, hmm. If I change this to invoke and wait, what happens? In that case, I'm guessing the dialogue will show up. No, it doesn't. Oh, uh, well, it, it doesn't compile. Um, well, that's not quite working yet, but that's all the time we have for this episode. So I'm going to look into this a little bit further in the next episode, but again, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm not sure that the cost benefit ratios makes it worth it. So thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you next time.